Hi everyone, this is Serena. You're watching Now It's So Vivid, and today I'm going to ramble on about a topic that is pretty near and dear to my heart. I'm going to talk about how I use music in magic. So, so I wanted to make this video um, for a couple reasons. One, because I had my witch camp experience last year, which it sort of added to my repertoire of um, musical magic making, I guess, and also because I've been having this kind of disappointment, I think, in the past couple of years where I'm just unable to connect to most pagan music. Um, nothing against it, I don't think that the music itself is bad, um, there's certainly great musicianship and it makes good music, but uh, none of it seems to affect me the way that certain other musics do. And what I try to achieve in when I use music in my practice is to achieve that moment of ecstasy that you get when you hear a piece of music that really fucking moves you. It's a visceral experience. There's nothing intellectual about it at all. So I, uh, I just realized, I suppose, that I don't really identify with a lot of current pagan music in that way. Um, it doesn't make me feel the bliss, you know what I mean? Um, so if you've ever been to like a rock concert or just heard like a piece of music that really moves you, you understand that it comes from the core and it just sort of, it's involuntary. That sort of meant coming to terms with the fact that a lot of music that's sort of intended for my sect of spirituality uh, really just doesn't doesn't do it for me, and um, coming to terms with the fact that that's okay and that I can move on to other musics that do do that, I was kind of depriving myself for a long time of the actual accessible um, genres of music that really make me feel something, and most of them are um, either indie or some sort of like contemporary rock and roll or classic rock and roll or um, a lot of folk music, uh, a lot of stuff that includes um, tight harmonies and um, very evocative, I think, of some of the choral musics that I grew up with um, in school, but also in church because I grew up in the Catholic Church. So there is um, a connective piece between the musics that I find spiritually enlightening now and the sort of religious musics of my upbringing and um, recognizing that was very important as well. So I've compiled a playlist on YouTube of um, music that really trips me out and like puts me in that alpha state and makes me feel really connected to the divine and um, I'll put a link in the description. It's called Music, parenthetical K at the end, and um, yeah, I, I really hope that uh, it's not too weird for me to do something like this because um, I'm, I'm really into this subject. I, I learned a lot when I was at camp about how to incorporate different types of music into a magical setting. Um, in particular, there were uh, a couple of exercises that we did where um, we would take a larger idea but then sort of like boil it down completely to one sentence or something and then use that as um, the musical piece that built our container for that afternoon or, or just uh, as climax for the ritual. So there was a lot of building cones of power with uh, drums and using our voices and stuff like that and things of things kind of like what you would think of if you were thinking of using music in ritual and um, that was definitely there but also uh, there were exercises where we just sort of like realized how using sound from yourself can be a release and have uh, cathartic qualities there was an exercise where we did three minutes of laughing followed immediately by three minutes of crying and then the final three minutes were in total silence and it was a powerfully moving experience because um, uh, the direction at the start of this exercise was it's okay to fake it till you make it. We realized that there was an awkwardness about just laughing for no reason for three minutes but then I mean like you wouldn't realize how 
easy it became to just start laughing because everybody else was laughing and then it felt genuine and it didn't feel forced and the same was true of crying so after that you know six minutes of complete release like vocal and <laughs> emotional release um, there was like this meditative three minute silence where you weren't to say a thing um, you know try not to cough if you can help it <laughs> you know what I mean like really basking in the energies of the previous six minutes and that was um that was that was really powerful stuff um, it just felt kind of like all of the junk that I'd been hoarding inside of me kind of got wrung out like a wet rag and I was uh, I, I do that now in my rituals sometimes um, a lot of waning moon rituals that I do are often um, I often call upon that exercise to to get some much needed relief from stressors and stuff like that. So um, I, I recommend it to anyone. By the way, I w this would not be a complete video if I could not give credit to our instructors, teachers, whatever, the two people who uh, led Music Path while I was at camp last year, Guion Raven and Kelpie Dakota. Guion has a website, which I will link in the description, and I don't have any sort of like public platforming except uh, Kelpie's Facebook page, but I don't know if she wants to share it publicly. I will let her decide, and then if she tells me she has like a like a contact for people that want to get in touch with her or whatever. She um, is welcome to provide it. I'll just put it in the description after the fact. So these two people are extremely special to me. Um, they were instantly friends to me and uh, very supportive of me um, during my highs and lows of my first witch camp. And um, they basically changed my life uh, without any hyperbole at all. <laughs> I, I really do appreciate how much I learned from these two people and what they brought into my personal life and into my magic and that's that's yeah mad props okay so um <laughs> so music path uh opened the door for me to appreciate different kinds of um musics and different kinds of music making methods um in particular different ways to vocalize because my only instrument is my voice. I don't play any other instruments. I could bang out like a two-finger ditty on the piano, but that's about the extent of my <laughs> instrumentalism. Um, my, my talents are really my voice. So um, I had the opportunity to use it a lot when I was at camp and I came home with uh, new techniques. Um, so we uh, discussed like the different tones of voice that we use in talking so there's like the normal uh, voice that you use when you're talking to someone in your day-to-day -day life and then there's your loud assertive voice and then then your whisper voice and just when we uh, broke all of those down we kind of uh, reflected upon how we use them in our lives just sort of outside of quote-unquote magic and um, how it sort of spiritually affects us and the people around us it was it was cool to actually like do that because you know I haven't I haven't done anything like that since I took music classes in school so it was nice to revisit that kind of thinking and um, also I learned different uh, vocalisms like keening was one I was not familiar with before that is a sound that is somewhat musical but it sounds like crying so there's like a quality to Keating and uh, that was incorporated into one of the rituals that we did one night. Um, let's see, how am I doing on my notes? Doo -doo -doo. Okay, so I'm going to share with you some of the ways that I've started incorporating um, sound more into my magical practice because before I went to camp I did have certain sonic methods of like cleansing the space and stuff. I have my bell and I have that um, that black wine glass chalice thing that I bought that um, when I lick my finger I like do the the wine glass tone and, and that I've used to cleanse my space and um, perform like meditations and stuff like that so I had those but then when I got home I had a greater appreciation of like using um, just pre-made musics <laughs> in ritual um, there was that was there was that feeling that I was trying to chase and I, I realized that I couldn't just do it by myself um, I can, but you know, it's a lot easier if it's sort of lubricated by the use of other music, so that's what I start, started to do. Um, I'll play contemporary music in my circle. I will bring my phone into my circle and play a song if it's appropriate for the ritual I'm doing. Um, a lot of 
meditative playlists or mixes on YouTube I usually put on in the background of my ritual. That's like my default, I would say. Actually, recently I had a breakthrough where I had a ritual that I was trying to do and then it had a lot to do with um, being in harmony with uh, the collective spirit and also with the community and stuff like that. So I had sort of, you know, narrowed it down to two of these mixes that I wanted to put on in the background and I couldn't decide between them so I played them together and they made the most cool, weird, <laughs> like perfectly ethereal music and it was very, very fitting for the subject of my ritual. So um, that's, that's something that I will definitely try again. Um, also just a greater appreciation of sort of natural, maybe perhaps unintentional musics. So things like bird songs, um, especially in spring now, I've got the windows open a lot and hearing the birds go off in the morning is lovely. It's like a perfect way to wake up to hear like that natural music. But also things like um, we live sort of within half a mile or so of a train yard. It's in the valley behind our development and it makes the most beautifully spooky noises, um, especially at night when they're doing a lot of the yard activity. They'll like take trains on and off tracks and there will be a lot of like skidding and the sound of the wheels screeching against the, the rails is so fucking cool from up on top of the hill. They make like these really beautiful dissonant lullaby noises and um, that's often at night so that is a like a beautifully relaxing um, piece of natural music that I fall asleep to all the time. It's, I think it's enchanting. But then also things that I hadn't really considered before that are kind of like musical, like deliberately musical. So stage performance is like a big one. I've been going out and seeing a lot more bands now. Um, I kind of participate more in stage performance myself. Um, I go to karaoke periodically it's some it's a you know a, an outing <laughs> kind of activity with friends that I really like to do and um, I've been devoting more time to that just so I could use my voice too because um, I don't I don't go to open mics and stuff I'm shy about that because I don't play an instrument so really my only opportunity to, to you know use my talents is to go to karaoke and we're having karaoke at our wedding which is pretty cool but then also stuff like uh, poetry slams. So I'm I'm kind of like intent on hosting a, po a poetry slam at my house sometime soon for my friends. I think that would be really fun because there is kind of um, an instant change in mood and in like emotional atmosphere when you're at a poetry slam. There's like something kind of mellow but also deeply uh, subconsciously intense because people are sort of burying their souls with poetry or just or even if it's not their own poetry they're just going up in front of other people to read poetry which is a tense experience and it's not it's not explicitly musical but there is like there is a tonal difference completely between who you are on the street and who you are inside a poetry slam so that's like that's that was one when I figured that out I was like oh my god I am so reading poetry in my circle so that's something that I'm trying to incorporate now I've been writing my own poetry and looking up poetry a little more so that's it you guys that is how I use music in my magical practice um, I hope that I've given you some ideas you are welcome to VR me if you have anything to share in this subject we can like use let's just make it a tag actually can we do like a music tag music with a k at the end and we can um share our personal experience of music and magic and you're welcome to participate i'll watch whoever wants to do that um i will leave the descriptions for uh Guion, my uh, teacher from camp and for the playlist that I made. Um, just to be totally clear here, I made that list for me, so it is very infitting to my style. I don't expect everyone to like it, but it is there if that's something that you're interested in listening to. Um, there are uh, certain artists who I'm really into right now, so you'll see them more than you'll see others, and um, these are all songs that, like I said, sort of evoke that feeling within me, so it is deeply personal but I hope that you enjoy anyway. Um, let's see, anything else? No, no, I think that's it. I think we can go now. Everybody have a great day, and uh, until next time, sweet dreams. Thank you for watching, your presence is a dream. 
I hold you all so highly in my magical esteem. I hope to see you soon again, there's more magic to brew. And until then, sweet blessings to you.